I want to wrap up the chapter on clustering and classification by talking a little about, about an overview of data science and some of the top algorithms used in data science in general. This is out of the section 5.9 of the book, uh, Data Driven Science and Engineering, Brunton and Kutz. You can find all this at databookuw.com. So mainly the idea now is to talk about, you know, when we think about data mining and using data anal analysis tools, what are the dominant tools available to us? And so I want to highlight what was a, 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 a paper that was written in 2008 on the top 10 algorithms in data science and data mining. So this is written by a, a big collection of authors who brought out together lots of uh, different uh, people in the field to, to basically bring together, here are the things that people are actually using in practice in c the community. Now, it is dated, it's 2008, and so one way to think about this is, these are the top algorithms used pre-deep neural nets. So that's an important thing to think about. However, they're still relevant to think about what these tools are because they can still be very useful. And then once neural nets have come along, then you know the world has changed from that time point. Now we use a lot of deep convolutional neural nets to do things. But this point here, 2008, I want to highlight some of these methods, some of them we've already talked about. And so I want to just kind of walk them through and how you might actually execute them in MATLAB, because some of these are just very simple, easy to use. So we start off with the unsupervised algorithms, the k-means. We've talked about k-means. It's just a, one of the workhorse algorithms for unsupervised algorithms. All you got to do with k-means is you're just going to say, give me my data. Tell me how many clusters you think are in there. It's going to give you back the information from that data. It's going to go try to find the clusters or trying to label all the data up for you. So it's a very far powerful technique, extremely easy to use, and, um, and so it's, a, it's one of the workhorses, and it was one of the, 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 those featured in this top 10 algorithms uh, paper. There is another unsupervised algorithm there, which is the mixture models. And we've also talked about mixture models as well, which is fit, GM distribution. These are, these are basically Gaussian mixture distribution is typically what this means. X and K. In other words, give me the data. Tell me how many mixtures, how many PDFs you think comprise that data. Give you back a model. Okay. So this is a very powerful technique as well. Um, basically with the assumption that you assume that the data is being generated by a bunch of probability distributions you determine how many. Just like you would in k-means, you say, how many clusters do I want? You'd say, there's two, two PDFs at play here, so you pick the number of distributions, and it will go fit these. Oftentimes, you fit them to normally distributed variables, but that's not always the case. Support vector machine. Also talked about this one. Support vector machine is all about taking your data projecting it to very high dimensional spaces and drawing hyperplanes that separate the data. That's the main thing. And the one trick that is used up there to do make that computation tractable is the kernel trick. So you're just going to tell it, give the training data some labels and a model. And you're going to get out a model and then you can use that model to do predictions on new data. Okay, SVM, very simple to execute. Again, the main thing here is that it can be very costly to do this, but with the kernel trick, it seems to keep the computational costs in range for people to do it in practice. CART, classification and regression trees. That's what that CART stands for. So this is, uh, these are decision trees that we talked about. So you fit a tree, take the data, label it, you get the tree, and that's your model. Okay, now what's interesting here, again, the cart is basically a very simple algorithm to use. You just simply say, if I have a data point or if my data points are n-dimensional, I'm going to walk through all the dimensions of the data and figure out which, which, is, which one of those dimensions is the best to split the data in first. Then you recursively do this over and over again and you just keep splitting your data as many times as you wish and you get your tree out. 
Okay, so you're also giving it labels. So this is a supervised algorithm, right? So SVM, CART, those are the two workhorses I think about for supervised algorithms. Very easy to execute in MATLAB. On to number five. This is one we didn't talk about, but this is about as simple as it gets. The K nearest neighbors algorithm. So I give you some training data and labels. K and N search, K nearest neighbor search, is you just take some data and you take some tests and put it in there and you say, okay, if I have some, some data I throw it in, all it's gonna do is say, this test data set you gave me, who are its neighbors in my data set? In fact, who are the K nearest neighbors to this point in the data set? And what it's gonna do is basically become one of them. So if I pull this in, this a new data set into, for instance, the dog cat data, then it's going to just say, who are my nearest neighbors? And if I have two dogs and one cat, so if I take three, three data points, k, three nearest neighbors, and if I have two dogs and one cat, it'll say, okay, I have two dogs and one cat, you're a dog. Okay? So it just looks at the nearest thing, makes a decision. Very simple, except that you do have to search who's closest to you. So, right, that's the cost of this, is in a high dimensional space, the search can be costly. Naive Bayes. Naive Bayes is based upon uh, a Bayesian algorithm for basically uh, understanding how to give a probability estimate about what this new data is. But you give it training and label data, fit Naive Bayes, and you get a model out. So I'm not going to talk in detail about this, but it's basically based upon the probability distributions of the, the different classes of data that you give it. And once you have those probability distributions, that's what sets up the Bayesian architecture, the assumptions about what the data looks like, and then you would essentially build a Bayesian architecture to fit the data. Again, simple to use. Adaboost. So Adaboost is an ensemble learning. So this is basically taking multiple models and training across multiple models and using the information across multiple models in order to make classification decisions. So here's the command for it. Ada is equal to fit ensemble, training data, label, method, Ada boost M1. So this is like in MATLAB. Okay, so it's a, it's a very powerful technique. Uh, again, commonly used boosting is, is really an ensemble learning are both known to be really important ways to uh, help your performance in doing classification and clustering tasks. So that's also built in here and used heavily. C4.5, it's a, that's not a, a, an algorithm that's in MATLAB, but it's a, it was a, a, one of the most successful algorithms out there for basically it's a, it's a decision tree based algorithm, but it's an ensemble learning of decision trees. So it's looking like a little bit like a random forest. It was a very successful algorithm. One of the top 10 of 2008. So this was not decided by me, but by this group of experts. <clears throat> the a priori algorithm, another one that you can't, you won't find in, in MATLAB. However, it's a, it, again, it's just another optimization procedure making use, as it sounds, of a priori, of making use of uh, inf information that you have about distributions of the statistics of your data set. And also, final one, PageRank. PageRank was a Google search engine uh, that was proprietary for quite a long time and which allowed them to produce the best search engine and made Google what it is today. So I'm just going to leave it up there. Details of all these algorithms you can just find online, right? So the, each algorithm itself can be uh, a subject of extensive study. So all I wanted to do here was to highlight the 10 that were given in that 2008 paper of the top 10 data mining algorithms. And again, to show you that some of those we actually covered are very simple, some we didn't cover, but they're there and you can certainly look them up and find algorithms for them. Um, and so, but that was 2008, data mining in 2020, we've moved a lot towards neural networks. So just have in mind that we don't throw away everything that we learned, however. Neural networks have their place especially as we go to very large data sets where we have the ability to train these large, deep neural networks. 
If you have more limited data, it's not always, it's not clear you should be using a neural network at all. Neural networks are going to work really well if you have the data required to train them. So I'll leave with that and just tell you that the world changed about 2012 with ImageNet. And we found that deep neural nets were, in fact, could beat in that scenario all of the other methods that were out there. And since that time, neural networks have taken off. But they are not necessarily going to beat every other method out there. It really requires a great deal of the data to train these neural networks. And if you have less data, you still might be better off using a decision tree, an SVM engine, or even... And here, too, this is a supervised algorithm. There's, the unsupervised algorithms still play a big, important role in terms of trying to understand features out of data when you have no labels. So we'll end there. That finishes the, the last chapter, five point, section 5.9 of the, the book on data-driven science and engineering. You can find all the details here, databookuw.com, along with a PDF file of the book, uh, all the codes, all the data, everything's available for you there, and you can play around with it. But uh, take a look and understand that the next chapter of the book, chapter six, is going to talk about neural nets. So here we've been talking about some of the more classic, robust uh, classification and clustering algorithms. And now we're going to move on to uh, where everybody's moving, which is neural networks and training of neural networks, which is just another model, but a very effective model for understanding the input to output of data in a regression framework.